welcome to my youtube channel kadam academy friend we are discussing the various topics today we are going to discuss on this single degree of freedom is due i have okay is under this damp vibration or viscous damping we are going to study the concept of the logarithmic decrement logarithmic decrement so what is the purpose of this logarithmic decrement what is the significance of logarithmic decrement how it will derive that we will see in this video on this mechanical vibration videos okay to find the value of zeta to find the value of zeta that is damping factor the big ratio and the damping coefficient c to find the value of that damp damp vibration so this logarithmic decrement term is used okay so in this case the the this curve displacements response curve for the damp system this logarithmic decrement uh, to find out this just drawn this curve the amplitude versus time diagram is drawn and this is the x1 is the the extreme position at the start the, the x1 is the displacement and it will start and it will complete this one cycle or similarly again it will move and decrease the damp curve exponentially exponentially it will decrease so so it's well so the curve slowly decreasing towards the mean position this is the mean position and it will move from this amplitude highest amplitude x1 again to the x2 lower than the x1 so what will happen this time period you can find out we know this formula for this time period 2 pi by omega d and this exponential curve on the both the side is is drawn and shown to you here also shown to you one cycle for this is suppose t1 is equal to capital d and the second cycle when we will follow this one from this position to this position so what will happen this it's twice t okay so from this origin this distance it is shown the when time lapse it will t 2t 3t like this 4t like this it will goes on increasing so this is the explanation for this diagram so one more term is there in diagram so di uh, we have to find out what logarithmic decrement the term we have to construct we have to clear it for this what is the definition of the logarithmic decrement we will read it it is defined as the natural logarithm of the ratio of any two consecutive amplitudes same side of the mean position so this is the same side of the mean position this is the mean position on this side what are the consecutive x1 x2 are the consecutive or x2 x3 are the consecutive amplitudes or like this x3 x4 goes on decreasing so this x1 by x2 x1 by x2 with log and this is nothing but the logarithmic de decrement it is represented by delta okay it is pronounced as a delta with no there is a unit for this one okay also you can write this this equation is 2 pi zeta by under root of square root of 1 by zeta square this is the way to prove this uh, equation we have to derive it mathematical uh, this is uh, Uh, this is a representation of the mathematical uh, representation for the logarithmic decrement and this equation is given so what is the definition the delta is equal to log to the base e x1 by x2 correct but we know this uh, we are this uh, under damp system we are study just watched the video of under damp vibration system under damp vibration system the in that we derive this x1 x2 is equal to m into e raised to x1 is equal to m into e raised to minus omega n into zeta into t similarly for x2 we can write the equation for that uh, the m e raised to omega minus omega n into zeta into t the m is what m is the amplitude okay and this side the this distance on this side suppose this is on this side the motion is drawn and the dotted line it represent the for the value of m and the the sun okay so this required the value of m is the amplitude okay maximum amplitude okay this x1 x2 we have written here now what we have to do we have to find out the value we have to here this del increment we have to find out so how to find out Just put this value of x1 x2 in this equation. The del is equal to 
log to the base e log to the base e that m into e raised to minus omega n into zeta t upon this t is what this is a t1 this so half second when we write for this x1 this t is t1 and in this case this is a t2 so i have written right now to clear you idea okay this minus omega n zeta t2 so what will happen in this case the mm get cancel and the del becomes walk to the base get cancel this will come on top side that will remaining what minus omega n into zeta t1 here what will happen here i will write directly here is omega n zeta k2 or we can also write here this log to the base e e raised to omega n into zeta t2 minus t1 where this td is dam time period which is equal to t2 minus t1 in this equation here t1 and t2 t2 minus t1 that the time period for the cycle total cycle t2 minus t1 are written and what will happen then the e raised to a it will nothing but the e raised to a is nothing but the constant suppose e raised to is a constant total term are constant e raised to a is equal to a we can write the uh, the equation as this del is equal to omega n zeta into td and here is the turning point of this equation this uh, td we do put the value of the td we have written in above the del is equal to omega n into zeta into 2 pi by omega d but we know that value of omega d already we have proved in previous video watch the video that omega d is equal to omega n into 1 minus zeta square this is the formula for the omega d correct as right? putting this value in this equation we can we get here what we get del is equal to 2 pi zeta correct right? omega n upon omega n into root of 1 minus zeta square the omega n omega n get cancel and remaining will the del is equal to 2 pi zeta upon under root of 1 minus zeta square so this is the final equation where this derived we already uh, told you where to derive this 2 pi under root of 1 minus zeta square so it is derived this equation so this value of zeta of this uh, uh, become a uh, where to find out this value of zeta from if we know the logarithmic decrement or the vice versa also we can calculate the we know the value of the zeta we can calculate del if we know the value of del in this equation if we know the value of del we can calculate the value of zeta also because 2 pi is the constant here this is a 1 minus okay zeta square now what will happen if cycles are several number of cycles are there here in this diagram this three cycles are shown to you if number of cycles are there then the formula becomes this del become is equal to 1 by n is equal to log to the base e this x1 is the maximum amplitude for this Uh, cycle is x1 is the maximum amplitude okay x1 by x n means the nth number of cycle for nth number of cycle uh, if we have considering the n number of cycles so this n is nothing but this one okay 
So this we can also derive. So this is the formula required to get it. And also in the in the terms of if we return here, let's convert it, square it on both sides. We can write this zeta is equal to what is the formula then in terms of del. I will write the del del upon under root of 4 pi square plus del square. So this is your formula to find out the value of zeta if we know the value of del. But how to find out this uh, value of c? Means coefficient. To find the damping coefficient we have the formula. What is that formula? c is equal to, I will write the formula here, twice zeta root of km. By using this formula we can find out the damping coefficient. So with, once we know the value of zeta, put it here, the value of uh, spring stiffness and mass if we know, we can find out the damping coefficient. In fact, this is the numerical, this is the derivation for this, to find out the value of this logarithmic decrement, logarithmic decrement we have studied. Now we are going to study the significance, what will the significance of this logarithmic decrement uh, and its significance. As we know this, uh, this delta is equal to log to the base x1 by x2 and also we can know the nth number of cycle equal to 1 by n log of y x1 by xn and also we know this the formula is equal to 2 pi zeta by under square root of the 1 by zeta square. So to find out this uh, the set and you have to uh, conduct this experimentation is also available in our uh, labs. This, uh, this is the this is your shaft this is your shaft uh, of diameter 4.7 millimeter i have shown over here and this is the, your rotor drum which is located over the rotor and uh, we can twist this rotor through this um, um, arrangement we can actually twist this rotor and by twisting it we are going to find the torsion frequency of it and right after that uh, this is your rotor uh, this is your oil drum in which you can see if you able to see you can uh, have a glance at the oil level which is there uh, we maintained over here oil level in case of oil drum and uh, there is a you can see this is conical shape of apparatus which is going to get deep in the oil drum and this oil drum is uh, we are using for damping purpose and we are here to find what is the effect of damping factor if we increase the damping factor then what is the effect of increase in damping factor to the frequency of our apparatus okay so this is our torsional frequency which we are going to uh, discuss and uh, we are going to find the effect of damping apparatus damping apparatus and uh, damping factor we are going to find the effect of damping factor over here on the frequency of the setup okay so this is our final aim and uh, one more thing i would like to discuss about now we have seen that picture of this actual video uh, now we to, uh, what do we do just we do by using this one we can also find out the value of this del this zeta also we can find out how to find out the value of zeta so already we know this uh, this equation this uh, 4 pi zeta square upon 1 zeta square okay just squaring on this both side this equation just where square on the both side we'll get this one del square 4 pi square zeta square pi 1 by zeta square from this uh, we can calculate this using the this uh, solving it this zeta is equal to in terms of the delta what is the formula 4 square minus or plus del square so this is the formula for to calculate the zeta so we can find out the zeta in this one okay and uh, once we know the zeta uh, we know this formula Zeta for this torsional, we can write this uh, damping coefficient Ct for the torsional uh, vibration into 
This KT means the torsional coefficient, damping coefficient, the stiffness coefficient, and this is the I is the mass moment of inertia for this thing, this plate. Okay, mass moment of inertia for this plate, and this I we can find out by using this formula M R square. So then the KT, KT uh, means the it's a torsional stiffness. Torsional stiffness. And how to find out the value by using this formula mt by r or we can find out gj by l l is the total length of that this rod okay this rod hanging from this position mass moment of inertia we have just found out and is by using the mass moment of inertia once we know this g is what in this case g is the modulus of rigidity and j is the polar moment of inertia and L is the length of wire, length of wire. In this case, G is the modulus of rigidity, modulus of rigidity. J is the polar moment of inertia and L is the length of wire. From this, we can find out the KT and we can find out the I. So, zeta we can find out by using this one. Also, once we know the zeta, we can find out the value of CT also. So, friend, here, the logarithmic decrement when we go for the experimentation, what we have to do? This x1, actually physically measure this value of x1 uh, from this stylus which will move on this paper and measure this x1 and measure this x2 and this x1 minus x2 is nothing but your depth. Or this is the your decrement, okay, decay. And how to find out the del? Block to the base. E x1 by x2. Once we find out the value of del delta, we can find out by using this formula value of zeta means damping factor. We, once we know the value of factor and this all the values we know, all the values of i and kt we know, we can find out the damping this ct. Ct means what? Your value of this your damping coefficient. What are the outcomes of this video of mathematical modeling for this all the vibrating system? Write down three outcomes and friend here you always learn by self-assessment only and you have to subscribe my channel Kadam Academy. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe it. Thank you very much.